I've always been involved with fashion or making since I was a child. I've been knitting since I was six years old. Any spare moment I have, it's really nice to knit on the bar. <laughs> now I've got my own little business, designing, making, selling, all sorts of knitted accessories. The part of Hackney I live and work in now is very residential. I'm now in an old Victorian railway workers cottage. It's bringing the sort of cottage industry back to knitting. <laughs> So you never know in London what you have behind closed doors. We're in northwest London, a suburban street. We're in Brent Cross, was born and bred in London, very much my home. And here is my knit studio, a little hideaway studio. As far back as 10, 15 years, you'll be working in design studios, maybe in central London, working with factories that are abroad, uh, which is what I used to do as well. I was designing knitwear for the, for the high street, all the different brands, Topshop and Dorothy Perkins, Jane Norman. I've also worked for Robert Carey Williams and Marion Pioski. I was actually their production manager, dealing with Far East production. I didn't really enjoy that sort of mass production. Essentially with knitwear, you make a small swatch and uh, you calculate the stitches and then you scale it up and you have your pattern and then it works out nothing towards your calculations. And it's like, how have I got it wrong every time? However, it's in those mistakes that you create something beautiful sometimes. Everything is made to order, so I don't keep stock. Someone sees something, they order it online, and then I start making. It is a much slower process. We call it slow fashion. One thing knitters don't always do, they don't always make bottoms. So I try to bring pieces that aren't just tops. So I made trousers here, different skirts. I just wanted something that looks fun and edgy and it doesn't scream, hey, I'm ethical fashion. Consumers are ever more savvy about provenance and caring about where, where things come from. We all buy things from high street stores where we know that possibly they haven't been manufactured in the best circumstances. It is nice to be able to buy something from somebody where you know where it's come from. It's like a very intimate and kind of a personal experience with the, with the product. One of the things I really can't stand about huge production in the Far East, for example, is the waste. With being in control of everything I make myself, I can aim for zero waste. This is a, a Dubier. This used to be widely used in all the factories. However, now they don't use them anymore. They use the big industrial machines. I can show you a little bit. It makes a, li a little noise. There's four threads, so which means I can use up to four colors at the same time. I've thought for years and years that there's an absolutely huge chasm between domestic machines or even these old industrial machines and what is used in industry today. The ones in, in the factories, they have all singing, all dancing, you know, 3D, seamless knitting. There's no way anyone could afford one of those unless you were a big factory or very, very rich indeed. <laughs> they cost, I mean, the price of a house pretty much. That's something I looked into and I thought, well, I'll just buy a house instead, which I did. <laughs> I have backed Knitterate. It's filling a huge gap in the market. Meet Knitterate, a desktop digital knitting machine. Now you can create your own garments and accessories and you can share them online. You can start a design from scratch using our web design app or simply load an existing design from the online library. The idea you could design a pattern and share that digitally with the world and they are able to spit it out of their machine potentially, I think that's really exciting. Creatively, that's, yeah, it's just another way of getting your designs out, out into the world. The process of making a garment has never been so easy. What I feel Knitterate can do is the customer could be quite involved, whether it's the size, whether it's the length, the color, it's all customizable. My knitting machine has four threads, the Knitterate has six threads, which means I can put a lot more colors, motifs that I cannot do with this machine. And Knitterate eliminates the fact that I have to physically move the carriage left and right, which is a blessing. You know, your arm gets tired if you have to make a felted scarf, for example. For example, this scarf is about 3000 uh, rows you have to do because when you felt it, it shrinks. So um, imagine doing this 3000 times and imagine you make mistakes and imagine you have to do it 10 times. It will be almost the same apart from it will be a lot quicker. That way, even though it's sustainable fashion, I get to keep up with the other brands. I will be able to continue for years if, if I have the Niterate. 
it's that kind of in-between of industrial and domestic. It's that nice marriage between the two. This new generation of machines such as Niterate, they're bridging that gap. There is that will that you want things that are made in London, made in the UK. There is that heritage design that we have that unfortunately we haven't had the facilities for, for many reasons, economy and space and so on. The goal was one day I have my own factory in northwest London. There's lots of space here. Now I'm thinking it's less needed. With the Niterate, I can potentially work from the same studio space, even have one or two machines, one or two technicians to come and help if it grows. I want London to be the hub of making, which I think, I think it can be.